you've been learning about how to improve your public speaking. But you've been wasting your time. Unless you do this one thing as well. You see, Professor Morabian discovered that words only make up 7% of what people remember. Just 7%. That means there's 93% of other factors that are important in getting your message across. And that includes 38% in vocal variety, tonality and the intonation of your voice. That still leaves 55%. 55% of getting your message across is not to do with your words or your voice even. So what can that be? It's your gestures, obviously. What you do with your hands and your body while you're speaking. 55%, that's massive. That's why it's really important that you pay attention to this video. Toastmaster, fellow members and most welcome guests. Hopefully we'll have some this evening. Gestures are massively important. This is, if you like, the punctuation that goes into your speech. When you've just got some text on a page, if you don't punctuate it, it's not very interesting, it's not very exciting, and it's, it doesn't give the audience or your readers any idea of, of your emphasis of the words. And that's what gestures will add to your presentation. So why are gestures so important? Well, there's three main reasons. One, they're like the punctuation of your speech. So if you imagine a block of text that you've written, without any punctuation, it's very, very boring, very hard for your audience to interpret that, to see where the emphasis should be focused and what your meaning or, or your nuances are. That's why punctuation is really important. And gestures and body language is what adds that to your speeches. So that's the first point. The second point is it brings, builds empathy with your audience. They can relate to it. It makes it more, more, more real to them. And the third thing, the third thing is it makes it more conversational as if you were having a chat with someone. Because that's what you do when you have a chat with someone. You use your hands and you gesture and you point and you, you get your message across. Whereas a lot of people when they're speaking, they're all rigid like that. Because they're remembering what they've try, been try, trying to say. And this is part of what we covered in the first week when we talked about stance. And you all, most of you, I think all of you here today had a go at that. But certainly... Uh, if not, we can go back and do a video for that and, and, and recount it. But it's all about breathing, relaxing, having a natural position. You can't actually see my hands, so maybe I need to step back a bit. But, but to have them in a, in a loose position and uh, bend the knees, be, be fairly relaxed, easy to move, to move around the stage as and when required. Not too robotic, just just a natural position and that is part of that's that's setting yourself up to deliver a good speech but the gestures will add a lot more to that there are three reasons why gestures are specifically important when you speak firstly it'll make your speech more conversational more natural and we've touched on that one already secondly it will prevent you from doing a nervous tick or a habit that you have. If you have a habit of putting your hands in your pockets, it will stop you from doing that. Putting your hands behind your back, it will give you something to do. There is a rest position we've discussed for your hands, as if you're carrying two shopping bags. It can be open like that, but we'll come on to that a little bit more later, why that's maybe not to be overused, that position. But it gives you something to do with your hands. Thirdly, will help you to mirror your feelings and get that across to the audience so you're better able to gain their interest and, and get some empathy from your audience, get them engaged in what you're saying. There are five stances that I'm going to cover with you now that are common gestures 
for using when you're delivering a speech. These are more specifically for when you're standing up giving a speech, as I am now, but also I'll try and put some emphasis on what we can do when we're sat at a computer. So the first one, first one, first one is thinker. If you're considering something, you might put your hand to your chin, you might put your hand on your hip or, or have your hand by your side, but you put your hand on your chin and you look up. And if you're sat at your computer, you can look in the camera, eye contact's important, and the camera for me is, is on this side here. And you, as if you're scratching your chin, you're contemplating it. There's a famous sculpture, it's called The Thinker. It, it's Italian, I think it was uh, Leonardo that uh, created it. But um, yeah, and it, it's that pose, isn't it? It's, it's that thoughtful pose. That's what you're trying to, trying to create in yourself and trying to portray onto your audience. Second gesture I'm going to cover is the placator, the pleaser or the pleader, and that's with your hands open. That shows your audience that you, you, you trust them, you, you're open with them, you don't have any weapons in your hand, which is where it comes from in, in our deep psyche, but it, it, it shows them that you're, you're bearing yourself to them, basically. And, and it can be overused, but it's, it's quite useful to uh, get the audience on side, certainly to start with. And if you've got a more natural position of, of as if you're carrying two shopping bags, then that, that you can alternate between the two. Third one I'm going to cover with you is the command or the, it's also the blamer, but the command. If you want to get people to do things and you, you want to empower them to do it or instruct them to do it or point where they want to go. Also, if you're counting, you've got three, two or one things to remember. You need to extend fully. Some people just do this, extend fully and fully commit to it. And, and some politicians use this gesture and some kind of half heart. I've seen Boris do this almost half heartedly lately. If you're going to do a gesture, commit to it, go for it. And that's a really useful, powerful gesture of getting your audience's intention, uh, to attention and getting them to get your intention. So you're instructing them to do something. Also, if you're blaming someone, Maybe not in a Toastmaster speech, but if you're if you're challenging someone to take some action and they haven't, you again you're, you're using your hand. It's normally one finger you're pointing, but um, yeah, I, I I hope no one will do that in a Toastmaster speech. It's such a friendly atmosphere, but that's the same principle of 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 blamer or command. You're instructing someone to do something. The next one I'm going to share with you is the Joker comedian if you say something funny and comedians do this a lot if they say something funny a joke and they want their audience to laugh they will signal this jack d is is particularly good at this because he's very very dead pan very very and, and you don't always know when it's all right to 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 laugh particularly in a live event because you might then be <laughs> caught out as the one person that laughs and you'd be be picked on so it's important to let your audience know when it's good to laugh. So if, if I was to tell a joke now, like um, I, I recently bought a, a present for my friend. I got him an elephant. He said, thank you very much. I said, please don't mention it. And that's that's my joke. So you've got to have your hand. It, it's, it's an asymmetric hand gesture. So you don't have both hands up here. You have one up there and one down there or the or vice versa. And it's just a. Almost a shrug, but uh, yeah, and I, I get that wasn't a particularly good joke. So maybe maybe we should have a gesture for groan. We don't have one of those yet. Maybe that could be adapted from this this joker. And and the fifth one, the final gesture I want to get you is to control your audience, to get them to come con stop talking or, or stop laughing. So so yeah, if I want to stop you laughing at my really funny elephant joke, I would I'd let you laugh for as long as you wanted to, maybe one, two minutes. And then I go, yeah, calm down. Also if, if you're giving a speech and you're waiting to start or, or you you're toastmaster for an evening, you're waiting waiting to start, you might just start like that. Or might might go like that to get them under control. But if it more subtly is just just put your hands like that. Just brings them under control. So those are the five main gestures, but also if you want to raise, get people to, to join in, if you want people to stand up, then you have to really join in with that. So you're actually doing the gesture yourself. Similarly, if you want people to raise a hand, 
then you've got to show them how to raise a hand. Who agrees with me? Raise your hand now. And you've got to have your hand up, not somewhere around about here, up, right up, a good, clear gesture. And this will help you to engage with your audience and get your message across. Hopefully this has been an insight for you or certainly a start into the world of gestures. Many of you do these gestures anyway in natural conversation, but it's, it's the trickiest to get it worked into your speeches as you, as you develop as a speaker. And there's no time like the present. So when you go home this week or when you are, you're at home, but when you practice your speeches for next week, we will be looking at gestures as well as all of the other things we've come. So this will be building on top of what you've already learned. So just to recap, gestures are incredibly important. They're 55%, gestures and body language is 55% of what your, your message is. So words are only 7%. So when you're sitting there writing your speech out for hours and on end, the words aren't gonna have the impact. They might do if, if you've got a particularly insightful catchphrase or, or, or take home message, you might even wanna repeat that. But the gestures that are behind that will be what really emphasizes it. So gestures are really important. 55% of what you say, really, really important that you use these to get in connection with your audience. And as you work and develop, you'll, you'll get that and it will be more natural. And the more you practice, the more natural it will be.